In this video, we will explain how to install load resistors when one is needed to regulate the power going to your new LED light bulbs. For this installation, we are using this 2011 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. We have already taken out the taillight housing. You can watch our video on replacing the taillights if you need more instructions on how to access your bulbs. Now that we've gotten the old bulbs out, let's see what happens when we just plug in the new bulbs in their place. The brakes seem to work pretty well, a nice bright red light. But when you try the turn signal, they flash too fast and a bit irregular. This is known as hyper flashing. It's a fairly common problem because LED lights don't draw as much power as those stock halogen bulbs do. There are two options for installing a load resistor. The first is a universal load resistor. The other is a plug and play resistor. Both have pros and cons. The universal will fit just about any car and is the least expensive option, but does require some installation. The plug and play is super easy to install. Just plug it into the wire mount coming out of your car and you're ready. The downside is it costs more than the universal resistor, may have an extra unnecessary resistor, and will not work in a CK socket. You can tell which socket is on your car by inspecting the plug. If your plug has the ground terminals located on the same side, then it is a CK socket. If they are on opposite sides, then it is a standard. This plug is a standard. If you need more information on how to tell what socket you have, please watch our video on CK versus standard sockets. For this installation, we're going to be using the universal resistor. And the next thing we have to do is locate a spot to mount the resistors. A few things to note here. You should always mount the resistor onto something metal, never plastic or rubber. The next is the location. It is highly recommended you do a quick measurement to see if your resistor wires will still reach the back of your bulb. Now that we know it will fit, we can start to install them. First, you'll have to remove the electrical tape holding the wires together. Now that it's all pulled back, we can tap the resistor into the high intensity or turn signal bulb. One side of the resistor will be tapped into the ground. The other will be tapped into the high intensity positive. But there are three wires. Which one to choose? Great question. And here are three ways you can determine which wire is for which. The black wire is going to be the ground or negative, but there are still two positive wires. To find out which one is the high intensity, the first thing you can do is look at the bulb. The longer filament is a bit thinner than the shorter filament. This shorter, thicker filament will be brighter than the long, skinny one. You can see that this filament runs to the outside of the socket, and the wires come out the bottom, here. You can see where those filament wires will plug into the light socket. And in this case, they are attached to the orange wire. If you happen to have a voltmeter, you can use it here to also find out which is the turn signal wire. To do that, you need to turn the turn signal on in your car. You can see the bulb is flashing. You first plug the black voltmeter lead into the ground wire. You can then test the other two positive terminals with the red lead. Plug the red lead into one of the empty terminals. When you have the right one, your voltmeter readout will bounce every time the light clicks on. If you have the low intensity terminal, nothing will read on your voltmeter. And finally, you can use the red lead to pierce the wire to check the volt output. Now that we know which wires to tap, we can use the included wire taps to get the resistors installed. Starting with the black ground wire, first, Open the wire clamp a bit with a screwdriver or pliers. Slide the open side of the clamp over the black wire. Then insert an end of the wire from the resistor into the open hole in the clamp you just added. Note, it doesn't matter which end of the resistor is plugged in. 
Use a pair of pliers to then secure the clamp by squeezing the metal bar coming out of the top of the clamp. When you are sure the connection is tight, close the top tab until it clicks to lock it all into place. Next, add the other included wire clamp onto the high intensity positive wire, which we have already learned is the orange wire in this case. Repeat the same steps to install the wire clamp. Squeeze it down with some pliers and close the locking tab on top. Because this car has two bulbs and the bulbs are wired together, we will install another resistor on the high intensity wire for the other bulb. We will follow the same steps to install it again. We should test these new bulbs and resistors before putting the taillight housing back together again. Here are the new brake lights. They will flash because we've installed the strobe effect taillight at the customer's request. And the turn signals. Again, you will see the extra flash in the turn signal because we've used the strobe effect bulbs. You can see from the indicator on the dash that the turn signals are performing correctly. No hyperflashing. Constant bulbs are also available and won't produce that extra flash when using the turn signal. Now we are sure they are all working properly, we will finish installing the resistors. Map out where the resistors will fit, remembering that they need to be mounted on something metal. Here looks good. First, drill a small hole. Then use the included screw to mount the resistor up and out of the way. Now the same for the other resistor we installed. The resistors do get warm, so be sure to hang them up out of the way where they won't be touching any wires. After you've hung the resistors, you can plug the bulbs back into the taillight housing. Put the taillight housing back onto the car, and you're on your way. Check out more videos on our page if you need help installing any of our products.